This is Randall Root and uh, this video is about using store procedures with parameters. We're going to take a look at uh, how you create uh, a store procedure that uses uh, different types of parameters and uh, how they're executed. The simple anatomy of a stored procedure is uh, as follows. A create statement and command uh, procedure or just proc if you feel inclined to, to cheat a little bit. Uh, come up with a name for your stored procedure make a list of parameters between a couple parentheses And then after the as keyword, you begin your stored procedure. And then eventually you end your stored procedure. I'm going to turn off IntelliSense. It's not really helping me at the moment. Between the begin and end, you put the body as the body of your code. So. In this example, I'm going to go ahead and um, just do some very simple math. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, add a couple values together. Now, to actually use my stored procedure, put the word go to separate the batches and um, execute the stored procedure as follows. I'll pass in any parameters. I do not use um, I do not use parentheses. I'm always tempted to do so, but that's not what uh, it's set up to do in, in SQL, Microsoft SQL anyway. And you'll see the store procedure runs. <clears throat> store procedures can also have um, what's known as an output parameter. An output parameter allows you to pass values out of the store procedure. You create an output parameter by uh, defining the name of the upper parameter and including the out or output keyword then instead of using the select to display the results you use the select to fill the variable <clears throat> I will alter the stored procedure Now when I execute the um, stored procedure, I'll still pass on the same values, but I need to pass over a empty variable to hold my results. I'll declare an empty variable. I'll call answer sum. and I'll indicate that I want to connect the sum parameter to the answer sum um, variable. Once the answer sum variable is filled, I can print it out on the screen. I get nothing in the message because I forgot to use the word output. It turns out that 
whenever you use output parameters, you have to indicate that you're using an output argument. Now when I run it, I'll see my value. I'll change the word to out. And I'll change it also to out as the argument. So out works as well as output. Um, similar to, these are very similar to programming uh, languages like C Sharp, which actually uses the word out as well for their output parameters. One of the reasons why you might use output parameters um, is because they can be of any data type. In the past, and you will may have seen somebody uh, trying to return the value of these parameters. and then capturing the value of the return variable, return code variable. However, although I'd like to make the return code a float, it turns out that Microsoft has only allows return code values to be integers. That being the case, it makes it somewhat limited, somewhat very limited, as far as being able to um, do very advanced programming. Let's say that instead of doing the 4.0, I put in 4.5 and try again. You notice that the output parameter, which can hold different data types, is much more suited to returning data. It's actually recommended that return codes be used to return status information. Another point of fact is that as soon as the return keyword is reached, the code does not proceed any further within the, the store procedure. And as such, it never actually gets to the next line beneath it, which sets the value of sum. Since sum was never set, I don't want to get any results. All in all, the return statement is not very useful for returning values from a store procedure. Instead, it's designed to return status information. Typical status information would be if there's an error of some type or if things go successfully return a value. An example would be if I go through and make a um, begin try and end try along with a begin catch and end catch statement I could return a positive status indicating that all went well if it reaches the end of the begin or the end of the try catch uh, try block and return a negative status if things didn't go so well if it reach it has an error and goes into the catch block you can make up any number you want some people will use uh, a very high range of return values of 100,000 and they do like 100,000 is good, but 200,000 is bad. Myself, I typically use positive numbers for good outcomes and negative numbers for bad, and usually keep the numbers relatively simple. But there's lots of different variations on the theme. Now, when I modify the start procedure, if all goes well, my return code will show me status.
because I can have many, many, many output parameters, the limit is 1,024. I can provide other results. You can only have one return value, but you can have many output parameters. I just have to make sure that I continue add in variables to hold the answers. Got to use the word output again. Ah, <laughs> I also forgot to multiply it. It should work much better. Yes, indeed. If there had been an error, such as if we tried to divide by zero, I think that's right. The try catch block would capture it. You know, I think I need to stack these. It's starting to get pretty messy. For those who don't know, I'm clicking on a word and holding down the control button as I drag and drop. That's what does the copy and, and paste for me. Okay, let's see if how she works. Probably not too bad, I just have to actually make sure I print out the value. Much better. Now we'll introduce an error by dividing by zero. We'll verify that the try catch block captures it, handles it silently, and returns a negative 100. In this video we took a look at how you could create stored procedures that have multiple parameters. The parameters could include input parameters, and output parameters. You're limited to 1,024. We talked about how you can use a begin catch block or a try catch block and return codes. How the return codes are used for status information such as positive 
100 indicating in my case that uh, this was successful, or negative 100 indicating that it was not, and how to execute a stored procedure that uses output parameters by defining output uh, vari uh, variables to use as output arguments. Hope this made sense.